With the warning signs already there for the mobile generation, long-term users like John Bryant may be just the first wave in a looming disaster. So as long as you can remember your dad oh, had a mobile phone. Absolutely. I think he was one of the first. My friends thought it was pretty cool actually because no one had them. You want to you tell know. an ass not so cool. Well, absolutely. <laughs> Have a look at your head. <laughs> <laughs> With time running out, John is setting out for Sydney for emergency surgery. He hopes Dr. Teo can buy him precious extra months with his family by removing his tumour. Good luck. I'm sure you won't need it. No, but you know. All the best, huh? Yeah, but I'm strong, so, you know. I've, uh, I've got a lot of trust in Teo, too, you know. I'll be alright, I'll still survive. Yeah. No, I can fight this one easy. Yeah. Just a few hours. Yeah. I love you. I'm going to make a little opening in the brain right here. It's a three hour operation requiring pinpoint accuracy and very steady hands. So if you go one or two millimetres the wrong way, He'll be paralysed. Oh, absolutely. See, see that brain right there? If I damage that brain right there, he'd be paralysed. By like chopping off his leg. By like chopping off his arm. Oh, that's horrible. Is that all? Too much, Yeah. It's not pretty, but take a good look. In the future, hundreds, possibly thousands, of Australian mobile users could contract brain tumours every year. And until we get our heads out of the sand and... and uh, realize that something needs to be done then more and more young people are going to die from this terrible disease well we're seeing more and more mobiles in use aren't we so if you're right we're in a bit of trouble we're in a lot of trouble we're in a lot of trouble but not everyone agrees do you think there's any link between mobile phones and brain tumors not at all okay so we're going to connect this in here it's going to be up nice and tight much like a, a phone would be when you're using it. Professor Rodney Croft disputes the latest mobile phone findings. He's heading a national research project into the effects of electromagnetic radiation on our brains. He admits the radiation does get in. So uh, electromagnetic radiation is actually passing over the top and into my head now? Exactly, that's right. So the electromagnetic radiation from the phone is penetrating into your head not a lot of it, of course, but, uh, but there certainly is some absorption by the brain and by, by the tissues around the head. But critically, Croft assures me the radiation is so low, I'm perfectly safe. And most of the scientific community agrees. So the mobile phone does make the brain heat up slightly? It does, uh, about 0.1 of a degree centigrade. That's absolutely right. But that kind of level is not the kind of level which is normally needed in order to cause some sort of damage. People usually think so long as, so long as the brain doesn't increase by more than say one degree, we've got nothing to worry about. So they've got it wrong? Vinnie Carano's got it wrong? Charlie Teo's got it wrong? That's right. That's my opinion, yes. You think they've got it wrong? Yes. Try telling that to Brett Kelly, another of Charlie Teo's patients. I think this is what has killed me or will kill me. Do you honestly believe mobile phones gave you that tumour? Without doubt. 100%. Brett used to run a successful earth moving business in Western Sydney. And just like John Bryant, his mobile was in constant use. That's so what would it be safe to say three hours a day? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, the next scan's going to be two and a half minutes. Just keep trying to hold very still. Two operations haven't been able to get rid of the tumour, but right now, it's stable. Sadly, Brett knows it's only a matter of time before it starts spreading through his brain. How long do you think you've got? I think... maybe six, seven years. At my very, very best. That's not too bad. OK, look good, look good. Once, brain tumours were a relatively rare cancer, but not anymore. And Charlie Teo's biggest worry 
is that their dramatic increase has coincided with a boom in mobile ownership. There is now a true exponential rise in the incidence of brain cancer. And so we have got to be responsible about all the potential causes of that and at least make the public aware of those potential causes. But that's my whole point. If you and your colleagues are right, there's going to be literally thousands of people who will be affected at some point down the track. Yes, absolutely. Now again, not everyone has used mobile phones because again, not everyone who smokes gets lung cancer. But we believe that a lot of people are going to be affected. Do you own a mobile phone? Yeah, I own, I, I own a mobile phone and I actually, my children also own mobile phones, but I insist that they limit their exposure. And the way they do that is I always, I almost always put it on speaker or hands free. Hey John, it's Charlie here. Surgery's gone very well. Good boy. Margaret, things have gone yeah. very well. Oh, has it? Mm. Yeah. Good, wonderful. Yeah. It's yeah. Good, very good. good. He's moving already and doesn't appear to be paralyzed. So. Yeah. It's just magic, isn't it, when you think that... A few days later, and John Bryant is up and about. For now, the surgery has worked. It hasn't saved his life. The cancer will inevitably return. But it has brought him precious time. It's hard to believe, you know, that in a few days, your body can just respond. It is hard to believe. It is, and you do. You just respond and you just feel totally different. Well, it's a good result for you, mate. It is. You can go home and give those grandkids a big, big hug, eh? I'll see you another day. Well done. Thanks, sir. Thank you.